Hey guys, it's Kwana. Welcome back to another review. Hope you guys are having an awesome, awesome start to your week. It's Tuesday, so I'm here for another This Is Us review and recap. We're on This Is Us Season 5, Episode 9, entitled The Ride. Um, this episode is all about babies and that very first very frightening car ride home. You got to get them home from the hospital safely. So before we get started with my thoughts on today's episode and my recap, um, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. I want to first of all just say we have crossed a major threshold over here. Um, we have gotten over 100 subscribers. So for everyone who is a subscriber who is watching this video right now, thank you, thank you, thank you. I really appreciate it. It is just such a big motivator to keep going, to keep doing this. I love talking about TV shows. I love talking about movies and you guys keep me encouraged. Um, this is kind of my release during the day, being a teacher and a mom and a wife and all of those things. So I just wanna thank you so much guys for just coming along on this crazy ride with me. Spoilers, if you have not seen This Is Us Season 5, Episode 9, entitled The Ride, I'm going to recap the entire episode. So if you haven't had a chance to watch yet and you don't want to be spoiled, I definitely recommend you coming back after you've watched it. Um, this was a, actually a really great night for me <laughs> in watching it. I've been struggling watching This Is Us on the night that it airs. And tonight, I just so happened to kind of like one have some grading to do and I had my phone and I was on the device and I was able <laughs> to kind of catch some of the live tweets and I love doing that because Sterling K. Brown live tweeting about This Is Us is always fun. So yeah, I'm going to recap tonight's episode, but I'm going to start with my review just so you guys, I can kind of give my initial thoughts about this episode and just say I was already after last week's trailer a little skeptical about this episode because I feel like, you know, one, they pitched it as we were going to be seeing Jack and Rebecca would come home with the triplets and I felt like we've gotten so much with like that initial time period with the triplets that it felt like it was going to be very repetitive. Uh, obviously I knew that part of this was going to be Kevin and Madison bringing Franny and Nikki home from the hospital as well as Toby and Kate bringing Haley home from the hospital and how that transition was going to work with Ellie. Um, I was not expecting what we got tonight was also a flashback of Randall and Beth, which is really nice because they have been little nuggets in the background kind of for the last two episodes. And so it was really cute. Although I feel like some of the hairstyles and of course they weren't as young, like they definitely have different ways of making um, Sterling and Susan um, Kalechi Watson look younger when they're doing their flashback sequences. They did a really good job of doing that when they were supposed to be like pregnant with Tess. Um, I didn't like their looks for this pregnancy, which was with Annie, but I had to remind myself that Annie is only about nine years old. So it's not really that long ago. So them looking a little older, um, it actually worked. So there's that. Um, so it was really nice. But we also got another ride. And I'm going to save that for later because it was really a surprise that we weren't getting. But I just wanted to start by saying I was very skeptical about tonight's episode. And sorry to say this as like a huge This Is Us fan, but I was somewhat right in my assessment of like the Jack and Rebecca stuff because while it was nice to see the connection and to have everybody's storyline kind of converge it did feel somewhat repetitive I mean we didn't get anything new I don't feel like from that sequence but tell me down below in the comments if you think that I'm wrong so I'm going to go ahead and start by talking about Jack and Rebecca's car ride home with the triplets so Obviously, um, you know, kind of catching everyone up. Remember that Rebecca has not only had her natural triplets, but their son who would have been um, the twins identical triplet or not identical, but actual biological triplet Kyle, he died and that's how they adopted Randall in the hospital. So Rebecca is postpartum in mourning and dealing with a new baby, a new black baby. Let's just put it out there. So 
it was a little hard because I felt like the focus, Kevin, I mean, not Kevin, Lord, I'm mixing them up because they, Jack was kind of acting like Kevin in this, in this um scene. He, it felt like he was taking more of the, the attention away. Like it was more about him. Like he needed a drink. Okay, why you're drinking and you're already worried and it's already nerve wracking getting these three crying babies home from the hospital. And now you're going to add alcohol to it. And then we got to actually see them getting cut off by the sports car. And um, it was just very tumultuous. And it was just them talking at the end of it all about their fears. And that was at the heart, like the theme of this episode was facing your fears. And so it was Jack reminding Rebecca that she was going to be a great mom. I did like the line that he said about it's already written because we've already seen her be a great mom. So the piece where it felt repetitive, it's like he's seeing into the future. He's like, I've already seen it. You're already a great mom. They drive home. The triplets stop crying and they just kind of sit in the car um, and, and, and kind of talk about their fears that they're not going to be good enough and kind of prepare themselves for they're going to start their new life. Aside from that line of, I've already seen it, there was a part where Jack was kind of like trying to comfort Rebecca, but it was almost like downplaying how really monumentally just this situation is not a good situation for a new mom and of course back in those days they really didn't know much about postpartum depression but like she's definitely like postpartum depression i mean it's just a lot so i just felt so bad for her in that moment and i felt kind of frustrated with jack because i just felt like he was trying to tell her you got this but it wasn't in a way like acknowledging everything that they were going through, that makes any sense. So I did not like the flashback with Jack and Rebecca. Um, and because we've already seen them deal with these issues and overcome these issues, that part of it just did not work for me. Um, moving on to Kate and Toby. <sighs> Kate and Toby, and I think we all know there's definitely going to be some fallout from this whole Ellie situation, especially because remember, we still have to deal with the fact that we haven't seen Kate in any of the flash forwards. And when we did see Toby, it, it didn't feel like they were together. It felt like very awkward. Like um, Toby tells Randall, like um, something like, I'm glad she wanted to see me or something like that. Like almost like he hadn't seen Rebecca or like Rebecca wouldn't want him there. It was really weird. So that's, kind of interesting i feel like we're still gonna get some fallback but anyway they're preparing to take Haley rose home and ellie home and it's just very clear that like ellie is going through postpartum depression giving her baby up for adoption and so they are trying to hype things up and talk to her about how they're going to include her and this is one of those moments where a silent car ride would have been great for her because she needed that moment to just kind of deal with her emotions. And if Kate has been there the whole time, she probably hasn't had much time to really mentally kind of like assess where she is. So I felt really bad for Ellie in that moment. I don't think, fingers crossed, I don't think she's going to challenge the adoption. I mean, she's already signed the paperwork, but she's just like, I don't think that I am prepared to be all up in y'all's life or have y'all all up in my life. Like right now I need some distance because otherwise I'm not going to be able to do what I need to do, which is give her to you guys. And she's kind of warning them and they need to kind of back off. And Toby tries to check Kate and Kate is obviously in her feelings. And I love Kate, but Kate is doing that thing that she does where she makes it all about her and she needs to ease up a little bit and understand like the position that Ellie is in. They get home and Kate wants to just, emotion dump and I get it I am a Kate I am an emotion dumper I am like a talk through my feelings get it all out kind of person and my husband is definitely like let me be over here and I will talk to you when I'm finished processing and I'm like no we have to talk through our feelings and so Toby has been trying to talk to her and finally he like tells her and I'm thinking he was going to check her about Ellie, but he doesn't. He basically just tells her he's been laid off. And I think 
if I might be wrong, but I think that this is going to be something that right now he has under control and it's possibly going to spiral him into a depressive state. And that's part of what we're going to see later on. I don't know, just I have to go back and watch the flash forwards again, especially the one with Toby when he gets the phone call, because I just feel like there's something we're missing there and I'm not. But ultimately, they're good. You know, Toby makes everything okay. Toby is just such a good guy. Can we, we need another Toby episode? Can, can I get an amen? You guys think we need a, a Toby episode? Um, then we get Kevin and Madison. Okay, sorry guys. We get Toby and Madison. <sighs> Riders of This Is Us. Dan Fogelman, I understand that the actress who's playing Madison is your wife. She is the mother of your children. She is probably a great actress. The chemistry between her and Kevin is zilch. It's non-existent. Stop trying to make us believe that they are a thing. I am, if they end up together in the flash forward, jaw on the floor. My jaw will be on the floor because I'm just not feeling it. But anyhow, she's dealing with the <laughs> Madison is doing the thing that my girlfriend and I have been talking about for a little bit about women being super strong and holding things down. And my fear is that Kevin's not really going to have to man up like and fans, fans, you little Kevin fans, you Justin fans. Don't come for me in my comments, please. But a lot of y'all been giving Kevin some passes saying, oh, well, he he asked her to marry him. Boom. That's check. He's manning up. No actions. It's just not, that's not manning up. So he goes and he gets coffee. Well, coffee mostly for him, a vanilla cream for her. She's there. She's taking care of the baby. She's got it all under control. She's looking good. She's looking like she ain't just pushed out two babies I couldn't have done it I'm not I, props to you miss ma'am and they go for the car ride home and he is frazzled he looks sleep deprived he looks like he has been dragged through the mud and he's barely got it under control and on top of it they're being chased by the paparazzi and he snaps and she has to go and handle it and talk to the paparazzi and like say, hey, I will call you when he goes on a shirtless run. Can you just give us this moment and has to reel everything back in. It's the Pearson emotions, the Pearsons and their emotions. They need to get it together. Madison was holding down things. And so I was like props to Madison. And then sweetness. Y'all tried to get me because you tried to make me have a little emotional thing situation going on because then Kevin has his little montage, his little daydream, his little vision of Jack where Jack has got the babies and the babies aren't crying and he's got it together and Kevin's like, how did you mom do this? You have three of us and he's like, don't be afraid, son. You got to go after what you want. And it's the pep talk. I love grown grown up big three and jack because we never get to see them together so it's so nice that they included that in there because we never see jack with the big three as adults so i love those flash forward those flash forward those vision sequences that being said he wakes up and he's sitting in the car and madison has already got the babies out the car into the house this woman just pulled pushed not pulled pushed two babies out of her mm -hmm, two and she done got the babies out the car and is sitting there got them in the little mama roos calm and collected how is jack helping her what is he bringing to the table and so he walks and he sees her she's got it all under control and so he asks her to marry him nothing about love it's all about family it's all about like responsibility obligation but it's nothing about loving her and i am a person this is a little personal nugget about me okay i subscribe to the love is a choice club it is a choice that you walk out every single day you choose to love your spouse every single day to work through 
your irritations, to work through their quirks, to work through your quirks, to go through that every single day. But we haven't seen anything at all from these two that suggests that they will be like physically a, a, physically compatible, that they will have some steam in the bedroom. We haven't seen any of that. And then he gives her this lame, tired, set, the second tired proposal. This is the second time that he has given her a weak proposal. I mean, at least he did kind of get down on a semi-knee, a kind of like half knee, and tears off his little hospital bracelet and says, this is your ring. She just put, where you are, you are a rich movie star, or at least somewhat rich. Where is her push gift? I mean, like, I can't, I can't. It's, it's the... It's the mediocrity for me. But if you like it, I love it. I'm sorry. So then we got the surprise ride that I wasn't expecting, which was Randall and Beth coming home from the hospital with baby Annie. That was a cute little baby, y'all, that they had played baby. Now, that wasn't a newborn baby because newborn babies don't look like that. But that was a cute baby. Side note, y'all, babies are not cute. And my husband and I just knew our children were cute. We were like, oh my gosh, our kids are so cute. They're coming out of the hospital. Cute. Look back at them baby pictures, them first couple of day baby pictures. And woohoo. And they are undeniably cute. Like people stop us cute, especially the little one. Cute. But baby, them first three like weeks, they look like aliens, okay? So that was definitely like a six month old. I done been here, ate some Gerber, been sucking on some some golden, some some liquid gold, healthy baby, but cute little healthy baby. And all Randall wants to talk about is baby number three. Hello, you have not gotten home from the hospital with baby number two. This woman has just pushed this baby out of her home, and you talking to her about baby number three. He's lucky he's married to Beth because he would have got all the cussing out all of the cussing out but we get it right he's adopted he wants a big family and it's nice because we know that that never happened for them but they did adopt Deja and so they're his three so it's like you have all these iterations of the big three you have Kate's two Kate's newest one plus Kevin's two which is a big three I guess Jack's just gonna be kind of by himself because he is you know, kind of by himself but then you have the older big three and then you have like Randall's three girls they smooth it out because it's R&B so they smooth it out they have their DQ blizzard which of course everybody on social media is now DQ better Dairy Queen better have I'm assuming that there was some paid promotion because I'm pretty sure they bought to get a lot of people going and buying a blizzard right now but it was nice because he was talking about the family tree and they're they are his branches because he doesn't know where he comes from he doesn't have those roots but it's nice because we know in the future now he knows where he comes from so now he knows the connective tissues so it's really nice also if you've never seen um sterling k brown's episode of finding your roots with henry lewis gates it's a really good episode he cries because it's sterling and he cries and pharrell pharrell has a good one too and he cried and that one hit, it hit me right up in here right up in uh, like that like that so there were a couple of moments where we got future nice sleek car we know it's in the future and there's two black girls in the car and there one of them is a nurse and then the other one is pregnant and you looking at the girls and you're like they're the it's 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 that fast it's it's that fast don't blink because if you blink hard like a joel olstein blink you're gonna miss it but it ends up being annie and deja and they count yeah, casting people especially especially for the black pierces i'm so sorry for the white pierces but the black pierces 
little Tess and big Tess, little Annie and big Annie, little Deja and big, mwah, y'all, y'all hunt them, we gonna find out that all them, them people are really related in real life because they look exactly like, just like the little girl who plays a young Beth looks just like Beth, phenomenal phenomenal casting so they roll up so now we finally have all of three randall's girls they're showing up in the future at um at kevin's house that he built where they're getting ready to see um rebecca pass away so so sweet such a sweet 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 moment so then at the very end a white car pulls up and they're like oh here they are or here she is I am assuming it is going to be Kate, but it could be, no, I was going to lie and say it could be Haley Rose, but we know who Haley Rose and Jack are in the future, future, future. So it could really only be it could really only be Kate or Ellie or Madison because we haven't seen Madison or if there's another woman that Kevin is with, then it would be that woman. So it's a lot of women it could be, y'all. But I'm going to assume, I'm going to think it's Madison. But we do know that they were waiting on Kate. So that was the end of the episode. That was our big surprise. Um, what did I think about this episode? What did y'all think about this episode? I don't know. I mean, it's one of them episodes. It Okay. Filler feels a little like filler, like they just didn't know what to do. I really appreciate the flash forward that we, because we have not gotten any answers or any flash forwards in a long time. So I really appreciate that part. But I don't know, I could have done without Jack and Rebecca. I could have done without that. And I think other than needing to put Rebecca in there, which they could have done with the phone call to, to they could have had another phone call to Rebecca and Miguel. Um, and then still giving us the Jack vision. And then we didn't need the Jack, um, and Rebecca drive home. I mean, but I get it. You know, the, I will say this, the Kevin and Madison storyline was probably one of the most, and that and Rebecca, mm. that Randall and Beth coming home with Annie storyline. Because we know that they had tests in the bathroom at home. They stole that story from Sterling K. Brown's real life. Um, but that storyline and Kevin and Madison, those were my favorite. The Kate and Toby one was necessary, but the way everything went down, I could have kind of done without it. But the, the Jack and Rebecca one, I don't know. It just didn't do anything for me. I mean, guys, I don't feel like we really gained a whole lot like because... They could have taken Haley Rose home and Ellie could have said, I'm going to call an Uber. I need the space. I'm going to call Uber. And then that would have been it. And that was all we would have needed. And it wasn't really for them. The ride home. Yes. The ride was tense, but okay. It just didn't, it just didn't do it for me. I'm sad to say that. I'm so sad to say that. And it was okay, but it's definitely not going to make anybody's top 10 list of episodes, right? So before this video gets any longer, we know that there's going to be an episode coming up soon with Felicia Rashad, who I adore, and she is working. Make your money, Claire Huxtable. I am not mad at you. I'm just so happy that she is appearing again. Um, I don't know. I have a lot of concerns for where the show goes from here. Because I don't feel like there are things that they can do, but I don't feel like there are enough big moments. And the way that they've crafted the show has always been about these big moments. And other than Rebecca dying in the future, they haven't teased any big moments. Like when we knew we were going to get the the Super Bowl Sunday episode, we knew we were leading up to finding out about Jack's death. Now, the only thing we're really leading up to is finding out about Rebecca's death. And they haven't done enough to tease other storylines that they could do. Like, I'm going to say it every single video. I'm going to try to remember to say this every single video until we get it. We need a Miguel episode. We need a Miguel episode and we need one stat and we need one before we get to the end of the show. 
Um, we need a spouse episode. Give us an episode split in threes where we get to see a day of Beth, uh, of Beth a day of Toby, a day of Miguel. Let us see that. Add Madison in there. Let us have that episode. Let us now, if you're gonna, if you're gonna force Madison on us, give us a Madison flashback episode. So those are things that you could do, but I do feel like there needs to be like another big moment. And I feel like there were things, obviously COVID impacted a lot and also Mandy's pregnancy impacted a lot, but I feel like, excuse me, that they teased a lot of things that could have come to fruition and didn't. Like they teased the idea that maybe there was going to be a family member that Randall would meet. Like I thought, most people thought maybe there was going to be like a connection with like his therapist, but that would have been too cheesy. But like a family member that he would find due to finding his birth mother. Um, there's just so much that they could do, but because they're not teasing it, I don't think they're going to actually flesh any of those things out. So it makes me wonder where the story has to go at this point. I guess the one thing that we could say is if they start to tease more of Kevin and Madison, maybe we could get a wedding, a build up to a wedding episode. That would be good. Um, that would be good. And being that we know Deja is pregnant in the flash forward, we definitely know we don't have to worry about her getting pregnant in the present. Oh, but that definitely means that her and um, oh boy probably don't stay together because he got a kid. So they probably don't stay together. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Or maybe they do. I don't know. It's a lot. It's a lot, y'all. So this was a good episode. And I'm rambling now. So it's time for me to go. But before I do, I just want to say one more time. Thank y'all so much. If you watch this whole video, thank you. If you skip around, thank you. And do me a favor and subscribe and leave feedback and comments and tell me what you thought about tonight's episode. And until next time, ta-da!